Well, we're in Kings Bay Park. I'm going to put together a kayak and get out there. It's $5 for parking and $5 per launch though. I thought it was supposed to be free. I'm not sure if there's better options for me, but I wanted to get into the water because it's 1030 now and I didn't want to wait drive around for like half an hour trying to figure things out. So let's, let's get going. Today we're trying the seat that comes with the base model. It's a lot thinner, so let's see how uncomfortable it will be. That was a lot quicker the second time around. It was a lot, a lot less stiff, so it was easier to pop out. Definitely have someone help you the first time you set it up. It's so much stiffer that first time. I'm ready to go. Easiest way to pick it up? Then carry it out. I'm out on the water. Pretty easy. Not too bad at King's Landing. There's a little area to slide your kayak down. It's a little slippery in the rocks here, so be careful. But one of the additions for this trip, I bought this at Itchituckney Spring State Park and General Store. It's a thing for your phone with a neck lanyard because I figure on this one there's a lot of rivers and uh, turnoffs. I need to navigate somehow. And the other one was pretty easy. You just go straight down the river. Can't go wrong. But uh, I like to really pay attention. But I'm back out in the water and uh, it's 75 degrees. I don't have any sunscreen. I'll probably burn a little. What you gonna do? But let's figure out what we're gonna do here I'm trying to oh this is what's making a noise but let's get going uh, the water's a little murkier here but I think when we get up the spring river it might be better I'm not sure but let's get going let's tie the camera down to the boat though all right let's get moving it's pretty nice you can actually get in the water and you just float slowly for a bit I don't know if you can tell it's a shorter kayak and there's no skiff in the back so it tends to go side to side quite a bit more than, more than the Tuck Tech because the Tuck Tech does have a skip on the side. I think this kayak just seems to be more rigid in the Tuck Tech. I'll get back to you once I'm at the river. We're going to turn up.
With all the snorkeling tours, kayakers, and boaters that come through here, they are very used to people, and they will casually swim underneath kayaks and swim right towards groups of snorkelers. They do have a little blocked off area if they want some alone time though. The calves will stay with their mothers for two years, learning where to go for food, fresh water, and warmer water throughout the year. Without learning where to find warm water in winter, if they live in colder water up to 68 degrees Fahrenheit for too long, they can endure cold water stress and could die. Despite being protected endangered animals, many of the adults still have propeller scars across their backs. There were so many manatees here, they constantly swam by and under people's kayaks. You had to watch out so you don't smack one with your paddles. I'm not trying to crash into that one, surprise me. I'll post the GPS coordinates, but there's a spot where all the divers kind of go to the snorkelers, and then further up, they seem to be just kind of laying here, sleeping. It's a really shallow area, and it's calmer here, so it's kind of easier to just kind of float. But try not to get underneath or over them because they're just sleeping, everyone, or laying there, and every once in a while they pop up and breathe. They're so cute when your nose comes out. 
so cute here. Can't imagine having a house where you have a whole bunch of manatees just chilling right behind your house. I'm sure they're all expensive houses as well. They all have expensive boats, so. I paddle a lot with my hands. Oof. I gotta get away. Unless one of the state parks was pulling a joke on tourists, manatees will actually fart to reduce their buoyancy in order to sink. As the day gets warmer, they will just float on the top to soak up the sun and get warm. hear that splash? Never kayak under those birds. It was a huge stream of poop. What kind of little bird poop so much? Never go under them. So funny seeing them in a tree with their webbed feet. It seems so awkward. I believe for the Oru Lake, the base model comes with this thin sit pad. I tried this today and it's, it's this side up because the elastic holds it in. I tried it today because uh, I tried the thicker one last time and uh, you know, I had to try it out. This one winds up getting soaked in the bottom and it just soaks up through the top. So my pants are soaking wet. Whereas the upgraded one is this gel thing. It has like a, this is the top actually. For a while I tried to figure out which one was the top, but this is the top. As you install it, you'll notice because of the crease in the middle, but it's a lot thicker and it keeps the moisture off. So my butt didn't get wet at all with this one. So is it worth the upgrade? I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much it costs, but I'll have to take a look, but it really keeps your butt dry. And right now I'm going to sit on this as I drive to my campground because my butt's all wet. Um, thanks to that little one. But yeah, this one's actually pretty nice. I didn't see any kind of comfort difference exactly, but uh, keeps your butt dry. As I checked into my campsite, there was another manatee right by the pier. Now it's time to dry out all the gear, eat, relax, and take a shower here at Chasahawitska River Campground. Thanks for watching, folks. Have a good night.